All right, guys, new comic book day, March 10th, 2021. It's coming up. It's this Wednesday. So let's talk about what's in the solicitations and what I'm getting. What's up, guys? BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them, all for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if not, welcome back. Uh, this is the channel where I talk comics every single day. So if you want to see comic book hauls, you want to see unboxings, you want to see reviews, and all of the above, hit that subscribe button. Then hit the bell icon so that you're notified every time we post new videos. Now, this show is called What I'm Getting. It is my weekly show where I go over the books that are coming out this week and I talk about which ones I'm getting, what's on the chopping block, and what's on the maybe list that I'm going to make a game day decision about. Um, so I love doing this show. I do this show every single week. It is by far the most difficult show to put together for this channel, but I love it. And if you love it too, hit the thumbs up button so that I know that you guys want to keep seeing these every week. Um, but anyway, with all that YouTube particular stuff out of the way, Let's go ahead and take a look at the list. Talk about what I'm getting. Now, I always like to start with the book that I am most excited about. And this week, that is Nonstop Spider-Man number one. So as you guys know, um, as far as my fandom goes, it's Batman over everything. And then it's X-Men. And then it's Spider-Man. And it's because those three books all had animated series that I grew up loving to watch right? It's, it's, it's no secret. and There's no mystery as to why I love these characters. Now, the issue that I've had with Spider-Man since I started picking it up all the way back at issue 36, the Amazing Spider-Man title, is that it just seems to be all over the place and it seems to be really slow. The action is just not where I feel like it should be, but whatever. This isn't a comic book review. But I say all that to set up why I'm so excited about this nonstop Spider-Man title. This from the very beginning when it was solicited last June, I want to say, is when I heard about this book first. Um, is they're promising nonstop action from the first panel of the first page. They're thrusting Peter Parker into like a fight for his life and for the city and all that. And it promises to be a fun-filled, action-packed adventure. So we got uh, Joe Kelly on writing. We got Chris Bachalo on the art. Uh, Tim Townsend and Marcio Menes. Uh, they're all on the creative team. I don't know who's doing letters, who's doing inks, colors, whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. But that's what we got on the creative team. But what's probably the most exciting, that's got me the most hype, is this cover. This cover A by David Finch. You guys know David Finch is one of my favorite cover artists at the moment. I love, love, love his cover work. And this dynamic posing, Spider-Man with the missiles coming at him, the Spider-Man webbing. I love this artwork so much. You guys have seen it in the background of my videos. It's been on that art box that I've had forever now. Um, so I'm excited to finally get this book. It's been delayed many, many times, um, but we're going to get it this week. And it's got a cover price of $4.99, which is pretty standard for a Marvel number one. All right. So now that we've got the first Marvel comic out of the way that I'm actually pretty excited about, let's talk about the rest of the Marvel pull list. Uh, and so <laughs> in a super stark comparison to the book I'm most excited about, uh, the next book on the list is The Amazing Spider-Man, number 61. This is the main title that I've been following for like two years now, and it's just been like, eh, eh. It's Nick Spencer. Uh, this one's got artwork by Pat Gleason, and I love Pat Gleason artwork. It's part of the reason that I stay on this title. They've been alternating between Mark Bagley and Pat Gleason on artwork, and I just can't say no to either of those names on artwork. But in this issue, um, we've got basically we've got Peter Parker is getting a new job and Spider-Man's getting a new suit. Uh, so I've I honestly kind of fell off the Amazing Spider-Man title. So I plan to just read this issue cold without all the lead up and maybe I won't be disappointed. So that's got a cover price of three ninety nine. I'm just getting the cover A, although. There are a lot of really cool variants going around for this issue, but a lot of them are retailer exclusives, so there's no point in me even putting them up on the screen because chances are, unless you're digging online, you're not going to find them at your LCS. So that's that one. It's got a cover price of $3.99. And the last book on my Marvel pull list this week is Strange Academy 
number nine, uh, Strange Academy, written by Scotty Young with artwork by Umberto Ramos. Honestly, I have not been reading this title. I picked it up. I slowly pieced together the run because people were, uh, you know, basically just hyping it up so much. Lots of new characters in this series. Um, lots of potential. They're saying it might end up being an animated series. And that's why there's so much hype around the title. But honestly, I'm not a big fan of magic and mystical arts. Uh, but hey, who knows? Maybe, you know, kids coming together will change my mind. I got to take the time to actually read this run. My plan is to continue through the first 12 issues. So I get two full story arcs. I'm going to read them back to back, do a retro reviews, and we'll see if the title stays on the list. But I'm just getting the cover A. I don't even think there's a variant on this issue. And it's got a cover price of $3.99. Um, and that's the entirety of my Marvel pull list. So just with getting those three books, my pull list is at $13. Not bad at all for Marvel Comics. Uh, now that we're done with Marvel, let's take a look at the DC books that I'm planning to get this week. Uh, and we are starting out with Batman Urban Legends number one. This is a brand new anthology series uh, for the Batman family. And we got a lot of new writers on it. So we got Chip Zdarsky doing a Batman story. Uh, we got, who else is on it? Brandon Thomas, who did some stuff for Future State. Um, we got, there's a bunch of people on this title. I don't remember who it all, who all it is, um, but it's an anthology book. What's interesting is I saw this book and I immediately wanted that David Finch cover B. So I added it to my pull list months ago. I did not realize until just now, and I was putting this together, that this book has a cover price of $7.99. I don't know if I'm ready to pay $8 every single month for one book, but because this is the issue number one, and because David Finch is on that variant, I'm going to grab issue one and tell you what I think. It's got to be a very strong anthology, because they're packing together four different stories. So those have to be some really strong stories to keep me on board. So I'll let you know if it ends up on the chopping block next time. Uh, but anyway, like I said, it's got a cover price of $7.99. And I'm getting the David Finch cover B. Uh, so next up on the list is another brand new series. This is The Joker. Number one, uh, written by James Tynan, the fourth with art by Gillum or Guillem March. Um, I'm actually very excited about this title. Now, I think it's interesting that the Joker is getting his own title and there's going to be, you know, activity with the Joker so soon after the Joker War. If you guys remember the Joker War ran from issue 95 to 100 of the main Batman title. And we're only on issue 106 now. So it's really soon to be reintroducing the Joker. But hey, they know what they're doing, apparently. Uh, what really has me excited for this title is that Punchline is going to be a major theme, and each issue is going to feature a backup story featuring Punchline. And she's supposed to be coming into her own as a villain. You guys know I love Punchline. I'm actually going to do a video about why I love Punchline so much here in the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, the Punchline backup stories are enough to get me hooked for this cover price of $4.99. And I'm just getting the cover A. Uh, next up on the list is Rorschach number six. Now you guys know why I'm getting this book. It's for the variant cover. <laughs> so Rorschach number six has a variant cover um, by Gabriel Del Otto. And I love his painted artwork. I saw it first on uh, Secret Wars. And then I had this amazing Spider-Man. I think it's called Family Business Trade or uh, Original Graphic Novel. And he did artwork on that. I just love his art. Uh, but anyway, Gabriel Del Otto's got a variant for this Rorschach series. The reason I'm not reading it, right, it's written by Tom King, which some people hate Tom King. I think he's great on these miniseries. I've been reading Strange Adventures. I like it. Um, and I imagine I would like this Rorschach book, too. But I've never read Watchmen, and I haven't read Doomsday Clock either, although I own both trade paperbacks. So I just feel like if I the first thing I read about Rorschach is this series, my view might be tainted a little bit. But... These variant covers just keep me collecting it. So I'll have that whole run before I ever try to read it ever. But anyway, that book's got a cover price of $4.99. And I'm grabbing that cover B, of course. Last book on my list is not a new number one, but it's a brand new start for one of my least favorite characters, uh, Superman. So this is Superman issue 29. Uh, so this is Superman's uh, first issue that's written by Philip Kennedy Johnson. If you do not 
count the future state stuff. I read Superman Worlds of War. I really enjoyed it. Uh, this book is going to see the return of John Kent from the 31st century, and it's going to kind of team up Superman and John Kent in a way that we haven't seen since um, the run by Good Lord, I'm blanking on the name. Peter Tomasi. We haven't seen Superman and John together since Tomasi's run, basically. Uh, and this is going to reunite them. And honestly, I'm excited about it. I've told you guys, I feel like Superman kind of lacks depth, but I feel like the family aspect, adding that whole father son thing, definitely gives Superman a depth that I personally need as a reader to take him seriously. So I'm excited to see where this run goes. So of course, I'm going to give the first issue a shot. I'm probably going to give his first six issues a shot because that's just how I do. Um, but I'm just getting the cover. Actually, I'm not. Cover A is cool, but there's a wraparound cover by John Timms. And that cover, I really, really like. And it's still the same cover price of $3.99. So yeah, that's the last book on my DC pull list. And I'm excited about that. If I just stick to the list and don't buy a bunch of random extra variant covers, my DC comics are going to cost me $21. So check that out. That's really dope. I, hey, between Marvel and DC, I'm at $34. I can't complain. Now, there is one book on my list from an independent publisher, Boom Studios, and that is Mighty Morphin number five. You guys know why I'm getting Mighty Morphin. It's the variant cover. Oh, it's not even the variant covers. It's just the covers. Mighty Morphin just plays on my nostalgia, and this cover A featuring the Dragon Zord is that. Now, I'm going to follow Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers up through issue six, get through the first story arc, and I plan to read those back to back. I should just trade weight. That's what I should be doing with these titles. But I feel like if you don't support the titles that you want to see, then they'll just go away and there won't be an opportunity for a trade. And I feel like DC proves that more than anyone because there's so many stories that I would love to read, but haven't been collected besides single issues. So anyway... Mighty Morphin number five with that Dragon Zord cover is coming home with me when I leave my LCS on Wednesday. And it's got a cover price of just $3.99. Marvel, DC, these independent publishers are putting out so many titles, so many great titles. They're selling out week after week and they're doing it with a cover price of $3.99. Why do you guys keep going up on your prices? I just got to know. I'm asking this question for the rest of the internet. So if you guys have that question too. <laughs> ask DC in the comments. Um, so yeah, that's my independent list. So obviously if I stick to that, it's just $4. So let's go ahead and add everything up. We got 13 for the, in or for the Marvel, 21 for the DC, that's $34. Add another four. So we are at $38 for my entire comics uh, list this Wednesday. Not bad at all. I got $15 of money to play with, and I'm probably going to play with every penny of it <laughs> and then some. Uh, now, let's talk about the book that's on the maybe list this week. And this is a brand new number one. This is from Marvel Comics. This is Children of the Atom, number one, written by Vita, Ay Vita Ayala with artwork by Bernard Chang. Now, Vita Ayala is also writing the new Static series that's coming out in April. So I'm excited to see what her writing's all about. This will be a this will be a cool little test run. I've never really read any Vita Ayala stuff, uh, so again, this will be like my introduction to her work. Um, but Children of the Atom is basically five brand new characters to the Marvel universe. So if you're a speculator and these characters take off, it'll be good for you to have this issue number one. Of course, that's not why I buy books, so I don't particularly care. But it's gonna be basically the <laughs> the solicitation. The first line of solicitation said, when did the X-Men get team sidekicks, right? So we got five team characters, um, and they're apparently going to be impacting the X-World in an interesting way. So I'm, really, I'm willing to give the first issue a shot. Chances are, just because they are new characters, they probably aren't going to grab me as much as, you know, Wolverine and Cyclops and Storm always have. But if their backstories are interesting enough, they'll keep me on for a little while. So uh, that's what I'm going to make a game day decision on. I really like um, this cover B by Todd Nock. I think it's a cover C, actually. But it's got the new characters and all the old characters in the background. It's just really good composition. I like that cover. Um, there's another cover by um, 
I think it's Bernard Chang who's got the cover B, but I think it might be a ratio variant, so probably not grabbing that. Um, but yeah, this cover C by Todd Nock is in the comic shop. When I get there, it's going to come home with me. So even if I add that book, I'm only at $43 for the week, and that is a win. So I want to know, what's on your pull list this week? Like, what books are you really excited about? Is there something that I listed here that you didn't even know was coming out and now you're excited for? I want to know in the comments below. If you like this video, of course, give me a thumbs up just so that YouTube knows you like it. And I know to keep putting stuff out like this every week. Uh, so yeah, let me know how you guys feel about that. If you want to talk comics with us all the time and not just when a new video comes out, then you should join the K-Squad on Facebook. It's my private group where we talk comics, we show off our hauls, we do mini reviews on issues that we've read, we have really, really great discussion, and just for being a member of the group, you get opportunities every single month to win exclusive prizes. So it's free to join. All you gotta do is tell us your favorite comic book character. So hit up the link in the description below and join the K-Squad and talk comics with us. Um, but anyway, I hope to see you in there. And if not, hey, that's cool. Hope you saw something you liked in this video. And if not, that's cool. I always say that you can buy what you like. Make sure you read what you buy. And be nice to others because kindness makes the world go round. Peace.